Two things have happened in our country, Kenya, on this Friday that have sent shockwaves right across the country and have even interrupted my recording of videos program, yeah, because they have uh, political impact and I thought it would be a good idea for me to quickly cover them, yeah. Uh, if need, if uh, necessary, I will do deep analysis later, but this is just a quick coverage of the two. The Wajia governor on a jubilee took ticket Mohamed Abdi uh, has lost his seat through nullification of his election. Mohamed Abdi, of course, won the seat on the Jubilee ticket, and the person who was contesting his win, uh, the petitioner, was in fact former Wajir Governor Ahmed Abdullahi, yeah, who is in the NASA coalition. The second piece of news, of course, is uh, Poli Kapigade, the deputy governor of Nairobi County has resigned. Let's start with Ojia first. Now in losing his seat, uh, Bwana Abdi became the first casualty uh, amongst the governors from the 2017 elections that we've just gone through. And of course it raises a burning question, okay? And the question is, is this a sign of things to come? Will many other or several other governors lose their seats through petition? And I'm talking about those belonging to the Jubilee Party who already have a, who currently have a majority amongst the governors. Now a lot of those reporting this news or some of those reporting this uh, news, some of the media houses have focused on the fact that uh, the degree of Bona Abdi uh, was not valid. And one of the requirements of a governor in Kenya is that one must have a university degree from a, from a recognized university. But the main meat of this uh, petition was uh, actually a repeat, a photocopy of what enabled NASA to win the presidential petition against the election of Uhuru Kenyatta on August 8th, which should be very interesting. It should be very interesting for any an analyst because what it would mean is that it may be the beginning of a trend uh, of Jubilee governors falling to petitions in the so-called friendly counties, okay? Now, it is interesting because in the friendly counties, uh, we experienced the biggest, most massive rigging. You know, it would not make sense to rig outright an election in an opposition stronghold, yeah? For, for instance, Nyanza, for instance, yeah? Or even uh, Coast. So it would make a lot of sense to go into other counties which are less radically aligned to the opposition, yeah? And that's what I mean by the so-called friendly counties. And this would include uh, counties in Masailand, Machakos, uh, Northeastern, and so on and so forth. Familiar pieces of evidence uh, in relation to the NASA uh, Supreme Court petition are irregularities with the forms 37A, 37B, and 37C. Some did not have watermarks, etc., etc. Just what we had in the Supreme Court. Now, I also know from uh, very impeccable sources, actually I've known this for some time, that the election in the whole of Northeastern was a sham, yeah? Uh, more than in many other regions. And of course, that brings big names like Eden Duale into the picture, yeah? His petition is still pending. And so, naturally, this news is definitely of great excitement to the NASA coalition. But personally, I wouldn't pop the champagne just yet, okay? Uh, it is wiser to wait and see how this unfolds. Because as I said in an earlier recording, government machinery is government machinery. And uh, this is going to be a tall order, yeah? Uh, the same trend spreading right across the so-called friendly counties is going to be a tall order. But let's wait and see what happens. Um, even if NASA manages to overturn um, a few, let's say half, 
uh, in those particular counties, it will still have uh, far-reaching implications on our politics. But let's wait and see. Now, the resignation of Paul Kapigadi as the deputy governor of uh, Nairobi is even more interesting. When I got there, resigned on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, which is rather unorthodox, okay, but still a valid resignation, I guess. And he said he was resigning because uh, the governor, Mike Sonko, has never really trusted him and it has become very difficult for him to perform his duties without the full confidence and trust of the governor. Now, that, uh, that particular resignation is disturbing. Yeah, and it raises very many questions, many more questions than answers. Indeed, a better word to describe that resignation of Bonaigade is the word fishy. It is a fishy, very, very fishy resignation. Why do I say that? Well, we all know that Sonko is a very close personal friend of the president. That is not a secret. Sonko is Jubilee Dam. Okay? And in any case, those who arranged for Bonaigade to be Sonko's deputy must have known what to expect or they must have been able to guess what to expect. Because the truth is that right from the beginning, uh, Igade was never Sonko's choice. Yeah? Uh, it seems that uh, the, a deal was made that Igade uh, becomes Sonko's running mate and this deal appears to have been made at the time Sonko was having difficulties getting support from the Jubilee High Command to be the Jubilee uh, uh, gubernatorial candidate for Nairobi. If indeed the difficulties were so great for Bonaigade, one wonders whether a simple sit-down between the governor, uh, Jubilee High Command and Bonaigade would have sorted it out. After all, Sonko is very loyal to Jubilee and he can do anything for the Jubilee party. And that anything definitely would, incle would include finding a way to work with his uh, deputy governor. And this is precisely what adds weight to the rumor circulating that uh, Polika Pigade is headed to the cabinet. Yeah, he's headed for cabinet appointment. That's what rumors are saying. And uh, what is even much more interesting is that the rumors say that Igade's appointment to the cabinet will be to a portfolio which will have some sort of oversight role over the Nairobi governor. Now, our constitution does not allow that. So this raises all kinds of, the, this claim raises all kinds of uh, constitutional issues. But then the truth also is the fact that uh, our constitution has not been followed. In fact, our constitution has been greatly abused in recent times. And therefore, one cannot outright rule out yeah, this latest uh, acrobatics, <laughs> if I can call it that, to control Nairobi County from the executive, from State House. Indeed, uh, constitutional experts have even started talking about the cons unconstitutionality of uh, the recent appointments to the cabinet that the president made. For instance, they have pointed out there's nothing like retaining your old cabinet uh, members, your old CSs, and then uh, believing that they will not need to go again through parliament for scrutiny and approval. Experts say, according to the law, yeah, when the president appoints a new cabinet, they have to go through the whole process all over again, whether or not they're in the old cabinet. The long and short of uh, both these two pieces of shocking information is that Friday was definitely, has definitely not been a good day for the Jubilee Party. Friday 12th January was definitely not a good day for the Jubilee Party. You lose one governor through the courts, then you have the unprecedented action in Kenyan history of a deputy governor resigning. Anyway, let's keep our eyes closely on these developments. Definitely both of these are developing stories. We shall continue to see <laughs> very many interesting revelations in the days to come. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.